My name is Matt Farah, and I like to talk about cars. In particular, I like to talk about cars that have been transformed, enhanced, or even mutated into something the original creators did not or could not imagine. And what better place to start than with the Yellowbird, a car so overbuilt it cost $223,000 new in 1987. A car so well thought out it took Porsche decades to catch up. My dad is a successful person, having worked as an executive for some of the biggest clothing brands in the world. While I respect my dad's work ethic and his hustle, I wasn't about to spend my life behind a desk in a suit. Alloy Roof had the good fortune to have a father who made, well, a good fortune, building buses. Alloy Roof decided he didn't want to make buses. Instead, he wanted to make these. I think he made the right choice. Very nervous. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's feel out the brakes. This is the roof Yellowbird. One of 29, the first production car. So there's the prototype and then this one. Even fewer of the 29 were lightweights. This is one of the lightweights. The way to tell a lightweight is that it lacks fog lights. 4,000 RPM. Oh, Jesus, that's... <laughs> this is a show called Modified, and this car definitely is. Nearly every part of the roof CTR, or Yellowbird, has been improved in some way. And this isn't a 911 Turbo with an upgraded engine. It's a narrow body Carrera that's been transformed by roof with an extremely custom 3.4 liter flat six, putting out what should be 469 horsepower, but is almost certainly more. There were plenty of other tuners modifying 911s in Germany in the 1980s. You had Gimbala, you had Koenig, but what was it about Roof and this car that stood it apart? Maybe, just maybe, it was Der Fascination, which, if you've never heard of it, let me tell you, it is perhaps the greatest onboard driving video of all time. The Nürburgring, 1987, Yellowbird prototype, and a very manic Stefan Roser fully sideways in loafers. What is it about a man in loafers that makes the car so much more appealing? If you haven't seen the fascination video, maybe you know about the 1987 road and track shootout that made this car a legend. In 1987, they went to a high speed ring in Europe with a couple of tuner Porsches, an AMG Hammer, a Countach, some Ferraris, and a roof Yellowbird. The Ferraris managed 179 for the GTO and 185 for the Testarossa. The Countach did 179. The Porsche 959, fastest Porsche at the time, did 198. And the AMG Hammer got as far as 183. The Koenig wide body Porsche managed 201 miles an hour, and the little yellow narrow body car hit 211, making Roof an instant legend. And the legend has it, he got in his car and then drove it home. The subtle greatness of the yellow bird is all in the details, to the point where you might not notice it in a crowd of other 911s. For instance, Rain guards present in all 80s 911s have been shaved here for aerodynamics. 935 style mirrors, which I know for a fact are terrible to see with, but they're great for aerodynamics. The panels look stock, but they've been replaced with aluminum, so they're super light. They've got these neat door poles for direct access so you don't actually tear them. 
the rear has been smooth and the rear itself is actually the narrow body car despite the fact they've got a twin turbo engine crammed in there. Now remember at the time Porsche was selling a single turbo engine so this thing was doing twins before Porsche did. They narrowed the rear end too and use this special bumper that has air flow out of it that prevents lift at higher speed. It helps extract from the back. The lights and the corner markers are all lined up just a little bit more flush than stock to maximize that aerodynamics. You got a lightweight aluminum tail and then it gets really neat. Roof actually makes their own gearboxes, which is really interesting stuff. The 911 Turbo in 1987 had a four-speed. This has a five-speed with a dogleg first gear. You can also adjust the brake bias on the fly. Oh boy, this is delightful. The pedal feel is good. The clutch isn't too heavy. The steering wheel is a little smaller than a regular 911, and it gives you the impression of a little bit more direct steering. The front wheels are also a little wider. The balance of it, it feels very complete. The engine has a turbine-like whir to it. Oh, wow, almost like a much more modern car. Oh, this is something very special. The gearbox shifts completely different from any other Porsche gearbox I've driven. It's notchier. Unlike all these hot rod 964s and stuff people are building today, this engine is super, super smooth. The torque curve is so flat. It just makes all the power all the way from four to red line. Let's play some trivia, shall we? This car was tested by Road and Track in 1987. We all know about the top speed run, but what we don't talk about is the quarter mile. See, this car ran an 11.6 at 133 and a half. Now, the game. How long did it take a stock Porsche 911 to beat that quarter mile time? 20 years. The 997 Turbo was the first stock 911 to beat this down the quarter mile by time. How about by speed? That took 32 years. The GT2 RS in 2019 was the first stock Porsche 911 to register a higher trap speed than the Yellowbird. I don't know if I've ever driven a car that had a Porsche engine that was not just more powerful, but smoother and more advanced and more technological and somehow even more precise than Porsche themselves are capable of building. Uh, Alloy Roof once said that the Yellowbird's engine was his interpretation of a Porsche 956 Group C engine, and well, you could certainly see how that would be the case, couldn't you? On this show, we're gonna look mostly at cars that were modified this century, but I think the Yellowbird is the perfect place to start. I've driven plenty of vehicles that take a stock car and just throw some more power behind it. And while there's nothing wrong with that per se, I wanna use this platform to talk about cars that have something more. Cars that have an ethos, cars that tell a story. This isn't just a 911 made faster. It's been completely rethought for a purpose. What Alloy Roof did was create what he thought could be the fastest car in the world, faster than anything from a manufacturer, and he did it using what he had on hand. He was correct then, and his vision has stood the test of time. More than 30 years later, there still aren't many cars that are faster, 